All right, welcome back to the channel. It's uh, Sam here with GSK Wealth Builders, and today I'm going to talk about my stock portfolio, what I'm doing with stocks. So 90% of my channel is going to be crypto because that's what I actively trade every single day. But I do have a stock portfolio that I've set up uh, for the long term, and I think it's going to do amazing. I think it's going to smoke the market, and I have a lot of friends that are helping me out. Um, in, in Facebook groups and things like that and they've helped me make the portfolio better so I'm really excited to just share with you the evolution of my my stock portfolio and where I'm going to be moving forward to uh, in the future so first of all uh, my portfolio is built on the information that Tony Robbins put out in the video called or in the book called money master the game and he talks about an all-weather portfolio the reason why an all-weather portfolio would exist is for someone who doesn't have the time to trade every day and also the the reason why they put it out is they realize that 95 percent of funds so 95 percent of mutual funds fail to beat the market right so you could have just bought the s p 500 instead of buying like the you know the large cap canadian investment fund or the large cap european diversified equities fund none of these funds actually beat the market so what's the point of having them if you're not winning, right? Uh, I'm in this to win. So what is going on right now is uh, I'm going to just show you my portfolio, which is uh, it started off as the all weather portfolio. And I'm going to give you that recipe because I think it's the most simple version. Then I'm going to show you what I did to modify it because uh, being young, I wanted to get more gains. I wanted to have more than a 7% annual return. Uh, and then uh, then the next iteration of the Dragon Portfolio, using some really intelligent people, I've been pinging ideas off of them, and, and they've given me ideas that worked in the back test. But I'm going to risk my capital, and I'm going to see if it works in real life. So um, that's what I do. That's what I do. So let's get started. So the all-weather portfolio is a portfolio set up based on balancing your portfolio to be good in all types of weathers. So when we talk about all types of weathers, you have inflation and you have growth, right? So you can have rising inflation, you can have decreasing inflation, you can have rising growth, you can have decreasing growth. And every time that you have something like this in the market or in the economy, for example, in March 2020, when COVID hit and the whole world or most of the world went on lockdown, what happened was we had decreasing growth and rising inflation. Why did we have rising inflation? Because the government was pumping money into the markets and all hard assets went up. You had real estate go up. You had energy energy go up. You had, well, rent was already going up. You had stocks started to go up, like when they weren't really supposed to at that time, right? So all of these things are rising. And now that we're having the economy opening back up due to vaccines and just people easing, what you're going to have is rising growth. And you're going to have, in theory, decreasing inflation because inflation has just gone up so high that it can't continue to go up that high, right, forever. So you're going to have decreasing inflation. And I'm, I'm not an expert in this. So what I do is instead of predicting what's going to happen in the market, I just put it in an all-weather portfolio, right? Ray Dalio is one of the most successful hedge fund investors of all time. He has the largest hedge fund of all time, and he also has returned the most amount of capital to his investors of all time, other than the Renaissance Fund, but they only work for themselves, right? So what he has done is he built this portfolio because he realized he's going to die and he needs to have his money because he's amassed about $20 billion in, in personal wealth, right? He, had, he needs to have his money continue to grow for his kids and his family and his dynasty. So the best way for it to grow was to not trust humans and to trust a system. So the system that he developed is this all-weather fund system, right? So the all-weather fund is... Um, the all-weather fund is comprised of 30% stocks, right? 30% stocks, 40% long-term bonds, 15% intermediate bonds, um, what is that? 7.5% gold and 7.5% commodities. So what you do is you, you, you buy five ETFs, right? And the five ETFs are going to be rebalanced one time per year. And the average of this portfolio is around 8% annual, like 7.5% annual winning 
85% of the time. And when it loses, the largest loss was less than 4%. So imagine, you know, 50 years, you win 85% of the time. Most investors can't do that, right? So it's right, right off the bat there. It's going to give you the confidence. So I'll say for me, what happened was I would always be like, my portfolio is not moving. My portfolio is not growing, right? And I would see the market just taking off. But what would happen is the market would take off and then it would just boom, do a nosedive. And my portfolio would just consider it just slowly, slowly, slowly go up. Turning. So there might have been two years where I was like way behind, but then I would just catch up. And what it did was when there was no large drops, because when normally when you're investing is what happens, you put in a hundred bucks, you put in a thousand bucks, you put in 10,000, you put in this, uh, you put in a, your, your tax return. And then when it tanks, you stop, you stop investing, you stop the momentum, you start th thinking of other things, and then you don't keep putting your money to make money. With the all weather, it doesn't tank, right? It just goes small dips, small dips. So what happens is it gives you the confidence to put large sums of money at risk and keep the large sums of money at risk. Oh, like coronavirus, it didn't really hurt all weather. All weather was up, right? So um, inflation, deflation, it doesn't really hurt all weather. It's, it's programmed to win in all seasons, right? So that's what I like about it. Now, someone else tested it. So this guy had the lazy ETF, he tested it, March 21. So in the last 10 years, it's uh, done 7.15% annual return with a 5.94% standard deviation um, and a 1.4% dividend yield. So you're getting dividends. And then here's the, here's the stocks, right? Now, mine is different. So I do VTI, the total market index. I do TLT for the long-term bonds. I do IEF for the treasuries, and I've tested all of these. Mine, I think mine's better. So IEF for the treasuries. I do IAU for gold. And then I do uh, commodities, CR, something. Anyways, for, for commodities, I replace my commodities and I put Texas Pacific Land Trust. And I'm going to show you that. So let's go to my portfolios. So portfolio one, the pure all weather. This is like if you just want to follow what Ray Dalio was talking about, um, the pure all weather, right? It's it's back tested from uh, 2007, right? So from 2007 to 2021 is what the back test has, um, right? And so you start with an initial balance of $100,000 in 2007, and your balance would be $285,000, right? So 7.64% annual return. Your best year was 20%. Your worst year was 5.3. But actually, the 5.3 is this year. It's not a full year yet. So if you look at the actual losing years, 3.56, 2.97, 2 2.84. So you can buy the dip, right? A 2.84% dip, you can buy that dip. And then what happened in the next year? 20%, 20%, right? Now, if I wanted to back test this even further, the reason why I can't back test this past 2007 is because there was no commodities index. So what I did for fun is I removed commodities and I put that in all in gold as the commodity, right? And I, I think it'll put the back test even further. So now I can go back to 1978 right so 1978 and let's see what happened there <laughs> there you go so you put a hundred thousand dollars and you end up with five million dollars right and your average return was 9.75 percent return eight percent standard deviation your best year 31 percent your worst year negative six percent and your max drawdown, so the worst you were ever down in your portfolio was 13%. From 1978 to now. That's amazing, right? So then you look at, uh, let's see, where are these bad years? And actually, that worst year was 2021. 2021 is not over, right? So it really doesn't count. So your worst year was 5% in 1981, right? And then you had, so you had four losing years. Five, five losing years. 
So you had one here, then you had one 15 years later. What? Oh, 81, 1994. 13 years later. So 12 years straight, you had winning years. You're going to be confident in putting your money in, right? Then you had five winning years in a row, right? Then you lost less than 1%. Then you had how many, many winning years in a row, right? And then you lost 1%. So the point of this fund is you can throw everything at this fund. Like you can throw everything. You can have confidence. And that's what's amazing about um, this fund. Now, I'm fine right there. 9.75% return. I'm fine with that. However, I got bored, right? So I modified it. So I went from, yeah, so this back test 2016, and the reason why is I added Bitcoin, right? So now with Bitcoin, so from 2016 to 2021, right, we're going to do Canadian stock constellation software. I think it's the best managed stock, period, in Canada, right? Shopify is an amazing stock as well, but constellation is a different beast than Shopify, right? Shopify is providing something everyone needs. Constellation buys companies. So that it's a portfolio of like, I'd say two, 300 companies. So it's like buying the index where Constell or where Shopify, if someone was to kill Shopify, it's over. Where Constellation, you can't kill Constellation because it's so many uh, different companies in one. So that's why I put Constellation. So Constellation is 30% of the portfolio, TLT, IEF. I replaced gold with Bitcoin. And then I put Texas Pacific Land Trust as the, right? I put Texas Pacific Land Trust as the um, commodity. So what happens? You average 38% per year. <laughs> the standard deviation has increased significantly, right? It was eight in the other ones. Now it's 25%. So... 38% per year, your best year was 132, but your worst year was 0.44% negative. And then your max drawdown was 12%. So that's my <laughs> that's my modified version. Like I said, if you're not losing, you can put a crazy amount of money in there with confidence. Now, doesn't say doesn't mean this is first of all, this is not financial advice, but this could break. This could break. This gets slaughtered, right? just hasn't yet I would just say that that's my disclaimer right and uh, past returns don't indicate future returns but I've been doing this for five years I just didn't have GBTC I had uh, gold so I, I added GBTC this year so then I pitched this to um, some really good investors in a group that I'm in and they told me about the dragon portfolio which I'd never heard of and what the dragon portfolio does is they add they add volatility, going long volatility into the fund. So I also changed my ratio. So this this is called that this is the dragon inspired portfolio. So I went from five ETFs, one, two, three, four, five, which is very simple, to seven ETFs. Now remember, you buy these seven or you buy these five in January. You don't touch anything until January. Right? You just once a year. And then you want to put these ratios back. So this is the Dragon portfolio now. 24% of TLT instead of 30. So I've decreased these by 40%. 9% uh, in IEF instead of, right, instead of 15. Then I've increased the stocks so to 39%, 39.5%. I've added Bitcoin, right? Actually, here's the words. So long-term treasury here, 24%. Intermediate treasuries, 9%. Constellation software, 39.5%. Grayscale scale Bitcoin ETF, Bitcoin Trust. I'm going to be replacing that, though, in Canada with a Bitcoin ETF, 10%. Texas Pacific Land Trust, 7.5%. And I added gold back. Someone said, you shouldn't get rid of gold. Cool. I won't get rid of gold. That's how I think. And then uh, someone said, you should add long... Um, Long volatility. So the only place I could find long volatility is, is XVZ with the 5%. So uh, let me just check the time. 15 minutes. Okay, so 
Now what happens with this portfolio? So we could only backtest 2016. So remember we backtested this one 2016 to 2021 and it was 100,000 turning into 551,000, 38%. Best year 132, worst year 0 0.44. Now let's watch here. 100,000, now it turns into 771,000, 47% annual return. Standard deviation way higher, 31%. Uh, best year 171%, worst year negative 1.4. Max drawdown 14, max drawdown here is 12. So now you've got to be, for me, it's like 15% is, uh, that's going to hurt. But I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick to the path. And if anyone knows a way to make this portfolio better, if I can get the max drawdown back to like 10%, I'm happy with that. But I just don't know how. So this is my Dragon Portfolio inspired uh, portfolio, and th this is what I'm going to use. So now, if you go, if you go deeper, you can go year by year to see what happened, right? So, for example, bonds really steady, right? And then boom, they got smoked in 2021. So that was an issue because why? The Fed was printing money. The, the, they were dropping interest rates, so the return on bonds got, got destroyed. However, Constellation Software did well. Bitcoin went up, right? Commodities went up. Uh, gold didn't. And then um, volatility went up a little bit. Now, in 2020, COVID, right? What happened in 2020? Bonds returned 18%, then 10%, right? Constellation did 31%. Bitcoin tripled. That's not typical though, right? Because um, it's not going to do that forever. Uh, Texas Pacific Land Trust, not doing well. Gold was up. Volatility. So you made a lot of money. That 5% position in volatility, right, made 100%. So I'm fine with this. Um, I'm fine with this. Now, if you go to drawdowns, in 2016, there was a 6% drawdown. 2017, 6%. 2017 September like for me my risk profile that would hurt I want to be 10% right but I got to you got to risk it so 2018 11% 2019 there was a 9% drawdown December 2019 that's the election right after the election and then there was a 5% drawdown in, in September no no wait that wasn't the election 2019 I don't know what that was uh, September 30, 2020, there's another drawdown. So I'm fine with this. I'm fine with this. So now let's look at how long these drawdowns lasted. So the 2017 drawdown of 14% lasted three months. That's fine. Now the 2018 drawdown lasted nine months. Two months recovery time. So it was negative 11% for nine months, and boom, two months it went back up. The, right, the December one, 10 months of drawdown. So, like, there I'm going to be adding more, though. There I'm going to be adding more. 10%, I'm going to be adding more. You just have to have the confidence. The rest of the drawdowns, two months to four months. That's fine with me, right? So that is my Dragon portfolio. If you have any questions about it, let me know. I'm going to be implementing this. I've already started implementing it. I'm going to run it for five years, 10 years. Right, and hopefully I can just improve it and make it better and make it more efficient. So if you have any, if you have any comments on how to make it better and more efficient, let me know. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Um, please like and share and subscribe to the channel. That's all I have for today. Take care.